In this video, I'm going to talk about bars, how to make barred puzzles and use bars for other things. So here you can see an example of a barred puzzle. There are these thick bars between some squares, and these are just used to separate words in this style of puzzle. So this kind of puzzle is popular, for example, as a listener puzzle for advanced critics. So if you want to insert a bar, you can just double click on the line between two squares. If I wanted to put a new bar between D and I, and start a new word at I, I can just double click on the line here. If I want to remove it, I can double click again. Alternatively, using the keyboard, I can hold down the Alt key. If I press the left square, that will put a bar at the left. If I press an up arrow, that will give me a bar at the top, a down arrow at the bottom, and so on. And then to remove them, I can just repeat them again. So Alt plus down will remove the bottom one. Alt plus up will remove the top one. Alt plus left will remove the left one. So that's how you would make a barred puzzle. If you're making a non-barred puzzle, you might find that you're entering bars by mistake when you're trying to enter black squares. So for example, if I click here, I've got a bar. If you find that annoying, you can disable bars altogether by going to Grid, Properties, and Advanced, and deselecting Allow Bars on double click here. So if I take off allow bars, and now I double click here, you'll see it only inserts black squares. If you find you've got bars and you want to get rid of them, you can use grid, delete all, oops, grid, delete all bars, and that will delete any bars in the grid. But you might also want to allow bars, even if you're not making a barred puzzle. So why would you want to do that? Well, let's say I'm doing a themed fill. So here I've written Abraham Lincoln as a theme word across my puzzle here. Now, if I want to look at filling different parts of this puzzle in a sort of semi-manual way, that's easy in the right corner here because it's kind of isolated. So if I put the cursor in this right corner, it's not connected to anything else and I can just fill it. So I can see what my fills are, generate a new fill, accept it, cancel it, whatever I want to do. But what about if I'm worried about this A at the hip start here? How do I check whether there are good fills for the list left part before I go on and fill other parts manually or other theme words? Well, one way to do that is to use bars. So if I fill here just normally, all these squares are connected, so it will fill the entire grid if I do an autofill. There, it's filled the whole lot. But if we don't want that, we just want to check the left corner, we could use bars to isolate it. So one way to do that would be to add a bar on this square here, this square here, and now this corner is isolated. If I fill it, it fills just this top left corner. But this may not be quite what you want because here, of course, I've actually got two four letter words. And that's not what I'd have in the full puzzle. I'd have these six letter words. So you might want to be a bit more smart about it. So for example, you could allow these six letter words and then isolate them from the rest of the grid by putting a right bar there, a right bar there, and a left bar there. But now I've got two two letter words that wouldn't be in the full grid. So I can put bars in to keep those separate. So now I've just got my two down words here, and then I'll get letters here which aren't tested for intersections, but I can inspect them and see what they're like. So now, if I try to fill this corner, I see a complete fill for the corner, and I can check whether these two letters here look sensible. So something starting IN doesn't look too bad, uh, and something with ST doesn't look too bad, or you can keep refilling it. So you can use bars in this way to isolate parts of the grid if you want to do uh, a really customized autofill part by part as you go along. Again, if you want to then delete all the bars, you can do grid delete all bars and you've got rid of them. And that's pretty much all there is to bars. You can either make barred puzzles or you can use them as a way of dividing up the grid temporarily while they're designing puzzles, or indeed make hybrid puzzles which contain a mixture of actual bars and black squares if that's what you want to do.